Hello. In this video, we are going to prove the following theorem. The exponential function maps onto the positive real numbers. Now, first of all, let's remind ourselves of where we started. We know that for every real number x, e to the x is the limit of the sequence 1 plus x over n to the power of n. And from there, we proved some properties of the exponential function, including e to the x times e to the y equals e to the x plus y, e to the x is greater than or equal to 1 plus x, and e to the x is greater than 0 for all real numbers x. Another thing we proved was that the exponential function is a strictly increasing function. We also proved that the exponential function is continuous. And some other things we proved were limits, right? We proved limit as x approaches infinity of e to the x is equal to infinity. And we proved limit as x approaches negative infinity of e to the x is equal to zero. Now, it's going to be important to write out what these two things mean. To say that limit as x approaches infinity of e to the x equals infinity means the following. It means for every alpha in the real numbers, there exists a capital N in the real numbers such that for all real numbers x greater than or equal to capital N, e to the x is greater than alpha. Second, to say limit as x approaches negative infinity of e to the x equals zero means the following. It means for every epsilon greater than zero, there exists a capital N in the real numbers such that for all real numbers x less than or equal to capital N, the absolute value of e to the x minus zero is less than epsilon. And so equipped with these properties, we are going to prove that the exponential function maps onto the positive real numbers. And what that means is we want to prove for every positive real number w, there exists a real number c such that e to the c is equal to w. And that's really what we're proving. So to prove that, let's start out by giving ourselves an arbitrary positive real number w. The whole goal from here is to find a real number c such that e to the c is equal to w. Now to start out, since we know limit as x approaches infinity of e to the x is equal to infinity, this means we know that this statement is true. And this statement works for every real number. So in particular, it must work for the real number w. So taking alpha to be w, we have that this statement is true. So there exists a real number I'll call b, such that for all x greater than or equal to b, e to the x is greater than w. Now, this statement works for every real number greater than or equal to b. So in particular, it must work for b. Taking x to be b, we have that e to the b is greater than w. Next, we also know that limit as x approaches negative infinity of e to the x is equal to zero, which means we know that this statement is true. And this statement works for every positive real number. So in particular, it must work for the positive real number w. So taking epsilon to be w, we have that this statement is true. So there exists a real number I'll call a, such that for all x less than or equal to a, we have that the absolute value of e to the x minus zero is less than w. And this statement works for every real number less than or equal to a. So in particular, it must work for a. So taking x to be a, we have that absolute value of e to the a minus zero is less than w. And this is just equal to e to the a. So we have that e to the a is less than w. And now what we see here is that e to the a is less than w, which is less than e to the b. Now, there are three possible ways that a and b are related. 
either a is equal to b, a is less than b, or a is greater than b. But since the exponential function is a strictly increasing function, the only possibility we can have is that a is less than b. Because if instead a is equal to b, then e to the a is equal to e to the b, which is false. If a is greater than b, then strictly increasing implies e to the a is greater than e to the b, which is also false. So the only possibility is that a is less than b. So notice, a is less than b, and w is a value between e to the a and e to the b. Now let's just visualize the graph of e to the x for a second. So right here we have a and b, right, because a is less than b. But then, since the exponential function is continuous, when we draw the graph of the exponential function from a to b, well, it's going to have to look something like that. And so this is e to the a and this is e to the b. And w is some value between e to the a and e to the b. We'll say it's right here. So notice, we see a value between a and b such that the output value through the exponential function is equal to w. In fact, since the exponential function is continuous, the fact that we're really applying here is the intermediate value theorem. And so let's recall what the intermediate value theorem tells us. Right, so this is one version of it. Suppose i is an interval and f is a continuous function on i. Suppose a and b are elements of i such that a is less than b. And suppose w is a real number such that f of a is less than w is less than f of b. Then there exists a real number c in the open interval a comma b such that f of c is equal to w. So we are going to apply the intermediate value theorem to the situation we have in our proof. In particular, let's take i to be the set of real numbers. We'll take f to be the exponential function. And we'll take a and b to be the a and b that we have in our proof. We'll take w to be the w we have in our proof. And as you can see, we know that e to the a is less than w is less than e to the b. That's what we have here. So by the intermediate value theorem, there exists a real number c in the open interval a comma b such that e to the c is equal to w. And so what have we shown here? We have shown given any positive real number w, we can find a real number c such that e to the c is equal to w. But that's precisely what it means for the exponential function to map onto the positive real numbers. And so this completes the proof. And so now let's talk about what we have established so far about the exponential function. We know that the exponential function is a function that goes from the real numbers and maps into the positive real numbers. But we showed that this function is a strictly increasing function. And because this function is strictly increasing, it must be one to one. And when we say one to one, we mean for every distinct real numbers x and y, e to the x and e to the y are distinct. But we just established that this function is also on two. So because this function is one to one and on two, we know that this function has an inverse. And so we'll call the inverse function the natural logarithm, right? And it maps from the positive real numbers to the real numbers. Now, from properties of inverses of functions, we have the following. Right? 
So in particular, the natural log of one is equal to zero. Because all you have to do is go to this one, take x to be zero, you have natural log of one is equal to natural log of e to the zero, which is equal to zero. And another thing is, just like how we had the estimate e to the x is greater than or equal to one plus x for all real numbers x, you can derive a similar estimate for the natural logarithm. In particular, if we give ourselves any positive real number x, well then, we know x is equal to e to the natural log of x, but by the factor we have right here, we know this is greater than or equal to 1 plus the natural log of x. So then just subtract 1 to the other side, we get natural log of x is less than or equal to x minus 1. And this should make sense because all we're essentially doing is, is we're reflecting these guys about the line y equals x. So you can compare these two by a symmetry argument. Another thing that results from all this is that we can define the notion of real number exponents. And so let me just give an outline of that. Let's consider some positive real number a. Well then, we define what it means to raise a to the power of any real number. And so we have real number exponents now. Right, and you can prove that this notation is unambiguous with the notation we've established before for exponentiation, right? That is, we've already discussed exponentiation when we raise a real number to the power of an integer, right? So you can prove it's unambiguous with that, and yeah. So yeah, this is some of the results that result from proving that the exponential function is onto. We now know all this so we can um, get some new things out of this. And so yeah, that's pretty much it for this video.